If you've seen a property that seems like it might be the one, you'll definitely want to arrange a second viewing. I think this is even more important than the first viewing, and I'm gonna be explaining why and what to do, what to say, and, and what to consider when you get to that point of the second viewing. First viewings are about emotions, heart, does it feel right? Second viewings are about head, is it actually, could it potentially be the one? By now, second viewing point, you really should have downloaded one of our Move IQ property reports. And these have a ton of detailed information on the specific property that you are considering as your potential new home. Everything is in there, from how much sunlight the garden gets, to broadband speeds, and boundaries of the property. If you haven't, then you can get one simply by clicking the link that comes with this episode. I promise you, you walk into any viewing with one of these Move IQ property reports and they'll know that you're a serious buyer. They are genuinely really good. There's a lot to think about on a second viewing. And although it sounds a bit extreme, I think it's worth making a checklist for each property that you're viewing. Download the ebook that goes with this series as that has great reminders and lists to help you at this stage of the process. Well, all stages of the process, to be fair. Get yourself prepared. This is really exciting times now. Get ready to take photos, arm yourself with a tape measure and a torch as well. They can be super useful. Now you are fully prepared, let's actually get into the detail of, of how to handle the viewing. First of all, I think arrive early. Arrive early, take your time approaching the house. Listen out for traffic, um, trains, construction or, or things like that. Have a good look at the exterior while you're waiting. See if it's well maintained or not. That goes for the street and the local area too. Once inside, the aim is to get a really detailed look at the property. Test everything. Turn every switch on and off to make sure the lights and electrics work properly. Open doors, open windows, check they don't stick and check there aren't any gaps. Um, as those, they, they can be expensive to replace, so you want to know what you're getting into at this point. Check window frames, check external doors for signs of rot. Um, not a bad idea to press them with your nail or some kind of a hard object, and they really should withstand the pressure. A few hairline cracks, absolutely not a problem, but cracks in walls that you can fit a coin in um, will be expensive to repair, and you want to know what's causing it. That may be a question for a surveyor, but mark it up in your own in your own notes. Open cupboard doors, check inside, and look for sign, signs of damp or mould. Ask to see the fuse box. When was it last rewired? Find out how old the boiler is, when it was last serviced. And perhaps if the boiler isn't on at the time, then ask them to show you how it works and, and see how noisy it is. Not a bad idea to turn on all the taps. Check the water pressure, see what the shower's like. If you see evidence of recent work, recent building work or painting work, remedial work, whatever it is, ask what's been done and why has it been done? I think it's also worth asking whether there have been any insurance claims on the property and why. Measure your current furniture so that you can check that it'll fit into the space and indeed will get into the space. Will you need to buy different furniture to fit or, or fill the space? Find out what fixtures and fittings are being included in the sale. Are there enough sockets in each room for what you actually need? What about the number and the condition of the radiators? Are they okay? I always take a torch so that I can have a good look up into the roof space and, and make sure that that is properly insulated. Um, look out for any signs of leaks or missing tiles. If you can see daylight, that's a pretty sure sign that there's a roof tile missing. I think also, check from the outside and if there are any flat roofed areas then absolutely look for signs of water pooling. If there's a water tank up in the loft then you'll also be able to check that that's in decent condition and whilst doing so look out for droppings or nests that could potentially signal that pests are, um, are, are about. Look out of the windows, really important. What will you see when the leaves are no longer on the trees. That is something that a lot of people forget to do at different times of the year. Get a feeling for how well the garden, how well the pathways and the surrounding areas are maintained and what would be involved 
in continuing to maintain them. Are the boundaries secure? The fence is okay. Ask who has access and how you reach the back garden from the front if that's not overly obvious. If after all this, you're still not sure, go back to your lists of wants and needs that I talked about in episode one. Really, how does this place stack up against your list? If it's a winner, then it's time to make an offer and that's fantastic. And that is what my next episode is all about. So make sure you're subscribed or following, hit the alert button and come with me on the next stage of your home buying journey. I'll see you then.